my clients who have listened and been like so cautious and just keep them separate, it goes so much faster because it takes that one instance like the other day that you probably were like, oh, she's sleeping, nothing's gonna right. happen to backtrack even more. Right. So. What happened the other day, Violet? Because something oh, happened. Okay. The other day, we had been doing well. You, you, and then you. separated. Okay. And then I think I just got kind of confident. So basically, as like Winky was on the bed and she was down, I would kind of say that was separate. Okay. <laughs> and then I, I took her outside. I threw the ball. So she was tired. So I went upstairs and I, we were we have in the hallway. We have like a desk. So she was laying next to me in the hallway, like out. Nice. She was tired. And I just threw the ball. And Winky, I was on the computer, so Winky, I just, she just walked up and she totally attacked her, and I don't know why. Okay, got it. Could have been the, like, being woken up startled from sleep. Sometimes dogs get really aggressive when they're in a deep sleep and then get caught off guard mm -hmm. by things. I see that a lot of the times in dogs that also have, like, resource guarding issues. But I think, how many times do you think it's happened now? And when was the first time? How old was she? Maybe it started around December. Yeah, so she was about 10 months old. Hi. Are you being a good and, girl? Um, and it probably happened like four times, five okay. times maybe. Four or five times now? Yeah. And it was her starting it, right? Pretty much. Okay. But Winky is a grump, so she'll yeah. growl at her sometimes. And But she probably had her whole a whole puppyhood and everything, right? Yes. Winky probably... But she was always kind of a grump. Okay. I and mean, that's common. She, and when she was a puppy, I had You're another dog here girl. my mom passed away and I ended up taking her the, her dog. Okay. And and my mom's dog was a Shih Tzu and, she, and he would kind of growl at her when she was a puppy. Okay. But the, the Shih Tzu left when she was probably about five or six months old. Okay. It's very odd that she's probably been corrected by Winky, you know, her whole life up right. until 10 months. Winky would growl at her, tell her she doesn't like things and now all of a sudden she's snapping. So there's something triggering it that we'll, we'll figure it out. But a lot of times now when like, if a, even a fight happens, it just depends on like how sensitive each dog is. Something might've happened and she didn't even mean to. The very first time it could have stemmed from like over excitement and she got too excited and then something right. happens that now they're both just on edge and like watching their back. So it's just, and I feel that that's what happens because sometimes, literally, I'll see them like do the stare down. Mm, okay. Like so, I'll see like the last time it happened when when I what stemmed me to call you. Yeah. Is um, we had sweetie. taken one out to go to the bathroom. Good girl. And it's kind of dark in here, and so then Mika came in from her doggy door, and my husband was standing right there, mm -hmm. and Winky was like walking towards her, and it was kind of dark. Okay. And then, and, and that's when she kind of, uh, Got she attacked. startled and went at her? Yeah. And the other day, what was it, last week that it happened again? That was the, the when she was asleep. When she was, okay. when she was Okay. Did she um, break skin? She did. She did? Yeah. Where does she bite her at? Her face. Always her face? Yeah, so it's, she's, she's had a, like a bite mark here. La this last oh, week so it was girl. right here. Oh. She's um, bitten her in her mouth. I mean. Oh, okay. Always her face. Yeah. Okay, well, does she lock on? Do you have to like? No, I can pretty much separate her. Pretty does she yell and she yeah, stops? Yeah, like I'll yell. No, I'll usually have to grab her by her collar. Okay. And she'll yell, grab her by her collar, and she lets her go like that. She and does. She doesn't. Okay. No, it's just. Got it. And and I and and when she starts at her, the other one tries to defend herself. I mean, she'll like growl. Yeah. Bad, but yeah. Know, obviously, she's not going to do any yeah. damage. Yeah. <laughs> she's a little Yorkie. She's a little. Yeah, and she's Should 12, right? Yeah. Uh, do you want to bring her in, like on this side just yeah. so I can see them like through the boundary? Yeah. Does Winky like people? Yeah. Hi, sweetheart. She's shaking though. She, oh, she shakes now when she's, she's, she's cute. Her when she's all do you see down. what you've done to her? But majority of the time before all this, like they could just hang out and oh, be yeah. okay? They were never best friends. Yeah, yeah. But they were fine. Okay. Like they would. Yeah. Winky. And I know we talked about the first step is keeping them separate. Mm -hmm. So well, that's usually what now. happens is people try the separate thing are like, oh, this is going great. Let's try them together or exactly what you kind of said, get confident about it. 
And but the only time that they should be together is during our like very controlled training. If you're gonna like be training with them. Okay. It's a lot to ask, I know. It's the complete opposite reason well, why you I'll have two dogs. With you. My daughters this last time freaked out so much. That they understand. That they, right now, if we're, if we're outside with Mika and somebody lets Winky out, the, they'll be like, Okay, wait, good. Wait, wait, wait. I mean, and it's like, and then okay. I also think that that puts kind of, like, they know that we are all on Stressed edge. about it. Yeah, absolutely. So the yeah. separation is going to be so key. To solve any issue, you have to first get to the point of where it's not happening at all. And you can see, even with this barrier and this distance, you were holding Winky and she's still shaking in the presence oh, yeah. of her. Mm -hmm. If she's not 100% comfortable at this distance, we can't go closer, closer, closer. Otherwise, all of those negative, you know, all of that negative energy, she'll feed off of it, which probably sets her off even more. And then if you see her shaking, I'm sure everybody in the family is, you know, Everyone's like freaking, freaking out too. So I always find that it's easier for you to be like, okay, everyone's separate. That makes my life way easier too. Right. You guys can all have kind of peace of mind. It's very hard to keep your dog separate, but I will tell you like my clients who have listened and been like so cautious and just keep them separate, it goes so much faster because it takes that one instance like the other day that you probably were like, oh, she's sleeping, nothing's right. gonna happen to backtrack even more. Right. So. I mean, whenever a dog, you know, like two dogs fight, it's not an overnight thing. It takes, it's going to take a little bit of time, but to get, to make this happen the fastest, just keeping them completely separate, it really is the key outside of when we're going to be training, not just us. So it doesn't always have to be us. Like I'll give you the tools that you guys need. Both of them will be on a leash at a far and working up so that we can reprogram their mind. So whenever you're solving any behavioral issue, you have to get to the point of where it's not happening to get to that like control center. And then we can let their minds go back out. But like when we let their minds go, it's going to be only positive and controlled thoughts instead of the negative thoughts, because what's happening right now, what so many people do is, like, okay, let's try to separate them for a little bit. Their minds are still running. And then all of a sudden, it's, they're good, but then they just put them immediately. And all that's gonna happen is they're gonna resort straight back to their natural instinct. You have to reprogram their minds and switch that association with each other from negative to positive to really make any progress, you know? So as long as we do it that way and then slowly gradually let them come back together first we're going to take away all mental freedom from them and then slowly give them more and more mental freedom to be okay on, on their own it's going to go a lot faster that way and a lot better you have the like lifestyle to be able to keep them separate right with boundaries and everything i do i mean it is tough like i know my, it's my not doesn't like this up a lot of times, yeah so sometimes the boundaries is just that she's upstairs and she won't come down okay and she's down here with the family uh and then for example at night she's crated so okay perfect i create her around 9 30 and then we people have can you know go all over the place okay so, good i'm um, glad she has her safe space Base yeah. as the crate as well because that's pretty essential yeah. too. Yeah, she only goes in there at night. Okay. Um, and then when we're not home during, if we're not home during the day, Winky's inside and she has a doggy door, so she's just in the garage and in the back. Okay, got it. But so they're separated. They're she can't come in. Separate okay. When we're not here. And that's totally fine if you're here and Winky's upstairs. I'm sure somebody's yeah. always keeping an eye right. on. And you know. And sometimes, like for example, sometimes. Like my daughter will come down and she'll put Winky wink on the chair and we gets kind of around here. Okay. But she's like away from like, her enough that nothing yeah. could happen. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're aware of that, that's totally fine. So, and what I'll do, we'll jump right into kind of giving you some exercises on what to do. How old are your daughters? They'll be able to like do the training, right? Oh yeah. Okay. They're cool. 16 and, oh, perfect. Well, my son's 18. He's not going to do anything. Okay. 16 and. <laughs> 12 and she's almost 13. Oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah, so they'll definitely. Yeah, and I wanted them here, but right, they both have classes right now, so. Oh, that's okay. No worries. Totally fine. She's usually very much very active. I'm sure she's tired. a chocolate lab. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And all of the instances have happened at the house, right? Yes. Inside? Yes. Okay. What is it? What is it with you? 
chocolate labs aren't supposed to do that. I know. <laughs> I know. She's, That's why everyone's like, she's attacking her? Yeah, you, wow. would, you would never even know. Look but at you. you. Know but she's very mouthy. Like, oh, with you guys even? Yeah, like sometimes... That's common for a lab, and even with that, you don't usually see it escalate to a, especially like a drawing blood. Very, very rare. And she, I take her to daycare. She goes to Camp Redamont every Ooh. once in a while. Mm -hmm. and my my in-laws have two boxers, and she's never had any other. Um, oh, bless you! Oh, oh, oh do you need to sit up? Any, she's never had any in off instances sit. of anything. Yes. Good oh, girl. Okay. But you've Maybe never seen like if they both have like treats or anything, you don't see Actually, it? Actually, no. Because before this whole thing happened, they would both be here and I would be able to do treats for both of them. And I would, and then I would tell Mika, okay, this one's for Mika. And then I'd say, mm -hmm. this one's for Winky. And I would tell Mika, this one's for Winky. And I would give it to Winky and okay. they were fine. Be okay? Yeah. And after like, or in between, have you had mm -hmm. like treats or bones around both of them? You're more like cautious about it? Yeah, I okay. mean, she does have her bones, but she's not really interested. Okay, and she doesn't seem like stressed or no. anything? No, and I do feed them completely separate, I've, and I've always done that ever okay. since they were, because she eats everything. Okay. She yeah. like, you yeah. see the lab. So like, I'll, I'll feed yeah. Winky inside the bedroom in there, and then uh, Mika will know yes. when I'm feeding her. Okay. So when I'm done, like I'll open the door and she'll run in there. And Winky's just sitting there and she'll finish oh, licking she the bowl. Oh, she does run in there? Okay. And then, and that's it. But she, she's ne they've never had any issues during those interactions okay. at all. And nothing with people or anything? No. Okay. Have you guys ever like woken her up when she's sleeping? No, because she sleeps. Well, she normally sleeps in the... In the crate. In the crate at night. Or if she's, like, napping. I'm sure she's been napping, like, at some point. Somebody, like, touches her or something, right? Yeah, but... Nothing. Nothing. Okay. But the other day I did notice, the other day, because I, um, I was actually on the couch, and she was walking by, and I kind of went like this, like, just mm -hmm. kind of tried to, like, put my hand over to yeah. pet her. And I did, she went, you know, she did. She did? Get startled? Kind of startled. Yeah, and I thought that was, because I thought that was weird. Yeah. It probably was just the feeling of, like, having to watch her back, you know, and mm -hmm. thinking it might be her. Did she, like, snap back or anything? No, she didn't okay. snap. She just got startled. She just, I, I felt Yeah, she, they just always feel like they have to watch their backs on, around each other now. Boy, with a winky, <laughs> breaking my heart in there. That's why it, it kills me because we're know. all in here. Yeah. And she's there and she'll just be sitting Aww. there. And Mika will sometimes not respond to her. Yeah. Like, she'll just be like, I'm like, okay, I'll just sit here. And oh, she's like, oh, okay. Like, she's like, oh, really? She's never not respected the gate to go for her. Okay. Never. But she'll sometimes not respect the gate. Got it. Where's her crate? Upstairs. Oh, it's upstairs? Okay, got it. I would say what, and so. Has she ever started anything? Oh yeah, she growls at her all the time. She growls at her. Yeah, but She's nothing never more. She's started like attacking her. Yeah. Well, okay, when they play out in the yard. <laughs> when they play out in the yard. Yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hi. Um, and I throw the ball at Mika. If I let Winky out there, she will run Jeez. after her and try and nip at her. If she's running, she, if she's playing. To Just like hurting ball. her? Okay. Yeah, she'll hurt like hurting yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Does that, has that ever turned into a fight? No. Okay. She'll kind of like run around her like, you know, yeah. what are you doing? I mean, the growling, that kind of stuff is, is pretty innocent, you know, compared to that. But what I would say first thing is like, if like she's the one with the issues, you know, like to, I think she's the one with it. For sure, yeah, yeah, to have to. Yeah, even though everybody blames it on her because she growls at her. No, definitely and not. She's, if she's you know, warning. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a warning sign. Mm -hmm. I would 100% expect them for a while for a 12 year old dog to growl at, she just turn one, right. a one-year-old dog so that she learns boundary, especially a chocolate lab, they usually don't take signals the best because they just love everyone and every dog. And right. um, the growling, actually you should never scold a dog for growling. So make sure that nobody is scolding her for growling. It's her warning right. sign to sometimes her. Sometimes they do, like if she'll growl, yeah. they'll be like, winky, no. Right, and you that's know? whatever, you know, 
a growling dog is a bad thing. That's what everybody Come thinks. On, Winky. Winky! Come here. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Winky! She's like, I'm not going anywhere. Hi, honey. Oh. You know what I would first do? Okay, let me get back to the growling. And then, um, oh, Winky. I think before I forget, I'll come back to this, but our, the number one thing needs to be getting her more comfortable. So if that means she's gonna have more boundaries, more crate time, things like that, that's what we're gonna have to do. Okay. But with that kind of um, energy, like she's just, Mika's just gonna feed off of that. So our first step is actually getting her more comfortable. Okay. Um, that's not always the case, because a lot of the times when you have these kind of issues, you have a dog that has a lot of behavioral issues or control issues in general, but she, did she, did you do training with her? Basic obedience? I did do basic obedience. I can tell. Yeah. She's, she's but got she's, a really solid base of obedience. Yeah. But she, I mean, we need to work. I mean, I need to work on her. Yeah. More. But yes, she does sit. She goes like, for example, if I tell her, let's see if she'll do it. Mika, Mika, place, place, yes. sit down. Good. Good girl. Good girl. Very Jeez, good. No, that's what she wants. <laughs> good stay, girl. Stay. So she, I mean, she's so cute. Kind of. I mean, you know, she. Yeah, no, she that's better. really good. Okay. Better gentle, than most. Gentle. Gentle. Oh, good, good girl. girl. No, I'm actually very impressed for a year old oh, chocolate lab. You know, chocolates are like proven scientifically to be the craziest. Really? Of I all of the that. colors. Did you know that? I didn't know Yes. I didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah Chocolate's so crazy. Me. <laughs> You're so cute though. Yes, you are. Oh, good girl. No, it's really good. Um so has she ever tried to like play with her? Oh yeah. And she just growls. Winky just growls. She growls. Like for example, that's why I have these like away. So I should just throw them away. They're horrible. Oh. horrible. What's that? But the, like the rope. Yeah. She oh. will grab that rope. Ooh. Here. Here. <laughs> but she'll, like, when bring it we're to together, her. she'll bring it to her and, like, do her, but so hard that it oh. hurts her. And then yeah. she'll start growling her and then she'll start walking away and then she'll insist, 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 insist. Oh, okay. She, oh, I don't even, I don't even, I think this we need to throw away. <laughs> so Winky would gra actually grab on to the rope. She did at the very oh. beginning when they were when she was first a puppy. Okay. She would, but okay. then she I think she shakes it so violently. Yeah. That it hurts, too it much. hurts me. Hi Winky. Good job. You came closer. Hi. Good job, sweetie. I'm not gonna pull you over. Hi, baby. Good girl. Okay, so yeah, we'll talk about that in a sec, but the growling, you never want to scold for. Okay. So any kind of warning signs, you never want to scold for. The fact that uh, you see that kind of stare down happen typically yeah, before is yeah. actually really good because that's a grace period where we can curb it. Okay. So a lot of the, the fact that you still have that is really amazing because a lot of times when things happen, yeah you get rid of that grace period and it's just instant just okay. there's no and warning that's what happened when we were upstairs because before even when you said separate them if yeah if we had them here together we were both everyone was here and i would i would be i would see that they would look at each other or mm -hmm. do something then all the time i would try and distract her. oh come here come here perfect you know, okay let's go over here let's really good idea so yeah so that's what i had been doing and obviously that but that's the right idea not. actually it's the right idea. Um, it's just very hard when, it actually makes it harder when it's not happening all the time, you know, and over certain right. things and random triggers because you don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know if she's gonna be okay with her growl one day. You don't know if she's gonna be okay with, you know, like probably, six days out of the week if winky walked past her she'd be completely oh, fine yeah. and then that and then one time sudden, yeah that yeah one time yeah so it makes it right. really difficult so you probably had the right idea but it's just gonna need obviously just a little mm. bit more of like actually training her mind when she feels a certain way to do something else okay. instead of attacking her right you can't attack your sister no more of that so 
it, yeah, it makes it harder because we also, we're gonna kind of try to set them up in situations where she'll want to do it, but because it's so random, it's gonna be harder to like pinpoint those kind of things to, to redirect her mind. So when you were redirecting her, that's perfect, but you might not have been doing it long enough that you actually caught it at a time where she felt like she wanted to go at her, you know? Mm -hmm. And then also just a lot of the times the, the huge portion of the focus is on her, but like we're gonna start the opposite of most dogs and a lot of it's gonna be on Winky, getting her more confident and comfortable and more boundaries on her. So other forms of warning signs. So the growling, um, dogs like lick their lips excessively okay. if they're stressed. And I'm gonna send you all of this okay. um, so you can go over it with everybody. Um, like excessive yawning. So stress yawns, big exaggerated yawns. From, I would be looking for this from both of them. Anytime that they're together, a barrier, everything. Um, and then obviously just like the full, you know, the stuck body stance. You can see when they're um, like zoning in on each other and their body is just tight. Right. Um, every dog is different. So you might see other ones, the hackles going up sometimes is a stress. She does. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she does it's just excitement that. though too. Okay. So people always think that's a bad thing, but um, my dog's hackles go up like every time they see the dog park, you know, so it's not always, but anytime you're getting excitement, especially with a chocolate lab, there's a very, um, there's a very thin line between like over excitement and then total loss of self-control. So I always use a scale when she's looking at you and actually super amazing that you have this because this is something that I would have said we definitely need to teach her. Anytime um, she's on here or just sitting there looking up at you, she's at full self-control. So the more excited a dog gets, the further from self-control they are, you know? So she's super excited to see people. That's why she jumps up. So just directing her to sit and trying to stay calm is the key. So there's a very like thin line. So that's probably what happened the very first time something happened. Just like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited, so excited, so excited. Self-control is way down here. Something happened, she went over that line and just snapped. So I see it happen actually a lot of the times, but that's why I say like that, that solid base of obedience that you have is super important too and amazing that she has that because if she can't control herself, how can she control herself when she has these added triggers? Mm -hmm. um, so things like this direct her back down to gaining self-control. Right. You know, we have to direct her there before she can do it herself. So, um, is that really all you've kind of seen is like a stare down from them? And then yeah. she runs at her? Mika runs at Winky then? Well, good. The, the last two times it happened there, it was so fast. Oh, it happened in here? Yeah. Okay. And one time when she was coming in and then one time when she was coming in from the outside. And one Who was time, coming inside? I what does she need to go out? Good girl. Oh. Go potty. Oh, you won't miss anything. Don't worry. <laughs> um, she, you know, I honestly can't remember who came in and who, who was in. One of them was coming in and one of them was coming in. I think Winky was coming in and she was right there. And then oh. at times it was kind of dark. Okay. Yeah, the so, darkness and then, and then one, like uh -huh, this. And then one time, Winky likes to go underneath this, um, this island a lot. Okay. And, and I, sometimes I feel like she thinks she's safe in there. Yeah, it's like a little and den for her. Hi, and Winky. one time, Mika went under there and attacked her in under under that. Really? Okay. Was it dark? No. Okay. I think that's what you had told me about. You said like a table or something that, that it could have been. Yeah. I think. And Winky was just like laying there? No, she was walking. I'm just, oh, she, she was, was walking, walking around? In there and then, yeah. So she was going there and standing there. Okay. Had Mika just come in from outside? I know it's hard to remember all that. Okay, got it. The, um, I think twice you said it happened like when one dog was going in and, the other one and out. Yes. That can kind of be like a territorial thing yes. coming in. So and, that then, and then the, the original time it happened, the very first time it happened, we were coming home. Mika was out in the garage and we had opened the garage 
and somebody had let Winky out to go to the bathroom through the garage. Okay. So they opened the door, they let her out, and Miko was in the in the garage, like super excited to see us. She was jumping around, and then she just grabbed her, and oh. that was the very first time. Okay, got it. So it didn't happen immediately when she saw Winky come in? No. Just like when she got excited, yeah, then went at her? Very, very, yeah, she oh, was excited. So everybody saw it? it. Whole, well, it was just, it was my daughter, because my okay. son had taken out the trash can. Yeah. It was, yeah. Oh, okay. Young, the, the youngest daughter. Got it. Yeah, and oh. she's the one that's all freaked out. Yeah, it's very scary. Yeah, it's well, so she scary. Well, she's going to... No. I mean, kill her. I mean, yeah. She, you know, I know. I know she, I mean, she can. Mm hmm So. Yeah. We will not let that happen. With your question, just asking if you should pick her up when something's going to happen. I mean, if she's literally, like, charging her, yes, I would do whatever it takes to, to make sure her. that she's safe. But it feeds into her issues with her, her being afraid of her. So when you pick a little dog up, you're telling her, like, you have a reason to be afraid of her, which she absolutely does at this point. But again, a huge part of this process is going to be healing her association with her right. because Mika 100% feeds off of her like scared energy now. And it's just right. producing like the both of them thinking. Okay. So like, for example, when I have them separate and she's upstairs and, I, and she needs to go down to go to the bathroom, for example, and Mika's here in the kitchen, mm -hmm. I will. I'll pick her up. That's well, totally her, fine. Take her outside, put her down, close the door and have her yeah. potty. That's totally so fine. That be, but that's yep. with no, because there's no negative. It's just like a Exactly, day -day exactly. Thing. And what's going to be super important when they are together, so if she's being picked up or um, what we're going to do is have them be on leashes and everything, though, that, like that's going to help them a lot, stay at their level um, and redirecting their focus. So if you're picking her up and walking through here, you should as much as you can it's very hard or if there's another person in here even better take your focus off of winky oh, okay. right. and same thing with winky hi winky look at me look at me because a huge part of that that's um really difficult is i see all the time um owners pick their dog up and then the the little dog is still really focused on that so it's not like healing her mind at all so what you really want Right now, it's okay to pick her up to take her to go outside, but try to shift her focus while you're picking her up. Shift her focus to you okay. and off of Mika. Okay, so like right now, no, right now she needs to go. I can oh, tell. she needs to go I outside. Can tell. Okay, can, so can since we have another person here, yeah. I'm gonna say, Mika, okay. sit, or you can even tell Mika go to her place while you do this. Stay, and now you can go with Swinky. Oh. I can tell she needs to go. <laughs> good girl, oh, poor little Winky. Yes. So actually, if it is just you, that would be a really good thing to do to tell her to go to her place. Okay. Stay, then get Winky, because her mind, instead of focusing on Winky, also with dogs with aggression issues, when a little dog's picked up, it triggers them even more. Yeah, because sometimes she's... Oh. I'm back. Oh, okay. Come on. Come on in. Just leave Winky. Yeah, out there. Okay, I'm gonna, you can come in. I'm going to do something. Okay. <laughs> I'm not busy. <laughs> um, so it triggers them even more. So although with her going to her place and being in a stay, she's going to be staring at you for a release, it's very different than just her watching you carry Winky. Because when she's watching you carry Winky, her mind is totally, yeah. she has full mental freedom. she will do that. Like she'll, like I'll be carrying her and she'll be watching me and then she'll approach me and I'll be mm -hmm. like, no. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, you can see it kind of building. Uh -huh. Or you might see her just literally looking like this. Like if you see right now, she's looking out of just pure like excitement, positivity, yes. but you never know. So I wouldn't, like if I was holding Winky right now, I wouldn't trust that look at all, even though it is, looks like pure positivity. The longer that she's, also the longer she's focused on something, the further from self-control she is. So if she's focused on Winky, Winky does something that just sets her off. If she's this far from self-control when that happens, mm -hmm. she's gonna snap, which happens, I mean, sleep, when a dog is asleep, 
they're very far from self-control, you know. And that's what she does. Okay, so right now, tell Mika to go to her to go to her place. Mika, place, place, sit down. What's up? Down. Good girl. And then the stay, stay is stay. very important. Mika, stay. Sometimes she doesn't pay attention to me. I mean, that is <laughs> harder than stay. Okay. <laughs> A little confused. I'm gonna go yeah, she is. She's like, what am I supposed to look at? I would just remind her with your hand. Stay. Stay. Oh, good. And here's a treat you could give her. Good. There we go. And good girl, Winky. Good job. So that's what I would always make sure to do. That, and that's what I mean by the only times when they that they're going to be together right now. Um, <laughs> you like that, it's a lamb, <laughs> it's just lamb, um, is when you can shift their minds away from each other. So exactly like that. So although it looks the exact same, if she were just following you, watching you and Winky, it looks the exact same to you as her just sitting there and watching. In her mind though, her mind is elsewhere and it's thinking, stay, 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 stay. Although she's watching, she doesn't have full mental freedom to be like looking at Winky and accumulating any thoughts. So like right now, if she's just walking around, she's not thinking stay, stay, stay. She's thinking what's Winky, that's Winky. That's yep, yep. Yeah, what is she doing? When is she doing? Is she doing? Is she... Yeah. And especially okay. when it's very random, you just never know. So like never trust her when she is looking at her. Okay. The hardest part for you guys is going to be once we get to that control place, then giving more freedom. Like but we'll do it in a way that you'll feel very comfortable and everything okay. um, super super cautiously but it's totally fine in the beginning to not trust her at all okay. honestly i hear like other trainers being like if you have that mindset you know you're just asking for your dogs to get in a fight but it's the only way that i've been able to 100 percent solve everything it's just very cautiously just don't don't trust them at all and be more cautious so that you have her full you know you have her mind exactly, and there's zero mental freedom with them. I want to see what you do right now. Another thing that's super important is that, and you might already do this, but Winky should get treats, affection, everything first. So sometimes when you have a jealous dog, or one that could be prone to being jealous, it would be her, right? Mika. Um, people think she should get the things first, but it should always be Winky. Okay. So, Winky. Over here. Yes, Mika. Good girl. The reason being is, did you see how long she was staring at the tree, like down that way? So the reason is, is because if she's thinking this is a treat for the both of them, this is going to, she's going to get really jealous about it. Winky. So the longer that she's just zoning in on her treat, the more those negative thoughts could accumulate. Mm -hmm. And what we want her to do is know that a treat to Winky means a treat to her. Yes, Mika. Good. So that's what I was okay. doing, waiting for her to break her focus and be like, okay, if she's getting one, instead of getting jealous of that, that means mine is coming up here. Did you see how long yes. it took her to do that? So I would do that until it's sped up, just so there's no competition at all. So like that could be, and I know she doesn't really resource guard that much, but that could definitely be triggered by it the longer she's just winky. Good winky. Mika, good girl. Okay, because then she, she, when she looked at you, then that's she's what like, to her right away. It showed she had enough self control to be like, okay, that treat to Winky doesn't mean that I need to get jealous over it or that's mine, I need to take it out on her. That's a positive thing if Winky's getting something, mm -hmm. that means mine is coming. And it just depends on the dog. Like, that was a, re that's really good. Some dogs, 
would just stare at Winky forever, especially so when I do that, I keep my hand down here. Winky. Yes, Mika, <laughs> good girl. So some dogs, especially a lab, I'd have to sometimes be like, hey, look over here to first start she's, training them. She's doing, she's doing really good. So practice that and s like you want her to speed up her look at Winky getting, or at me, you. when Winky's getting the treat. Okay. So leave your hand down here, Winky. So you'll see that show, that will get up a lot. But you can tell during that window right there, that's when she has full oh, mental yeah. freedom. And if that boundary wasn't there, it could be like, oh my God, that's a bad thing. In a second, she could go at her, you know? Right. Not that it's always stemmed from that, but this will also help them get more comfortable like with each other through the barrier because Winky has something else to focus on as well. <clears throat> yes. So only saying the name positive is gonna be super important. So if you see them staring at each other, hers she'll be more just zoned in focus on her never trust her Mika yes just call her name positive to you or send her to her place okay. with Winky make sure when she's like shaking or like a little bit unsure instead of the picking her up immediately it's Winky can you sit Oh, she doesn't do anything. Oh, she doesn't? That's <laughs> no, okay. We will make her. <laughs> Just that her focus is on you, because I can guarantee you, if she lets go of her focus on Mika, the shaking will stop. Okay. So the ultimate form of desensitization in a dog is not, whenever a dog is afraid of something, isn't when they can just watch that dog, you know, going by or doing the thing that they're afraid of. It's if she Winky can know that Mika is right there and she's on edge and she feels comfortable enough to turn her back on her. And in order to do that, she has to be looking at you. Okay. Does that make sense? So what I would do... Mika has to be looking at me. No, no Winky, Winky does. Okay. So with both things, it's complete opposite issues, but both of them are resolved by shifting their focus to you. So when I deal with like two dogs with like reactivity or like aggression working up to each other, all we do the whole way is shift their focus off of each other and onto me up here. So that's going to be a huge part of the process when, they, when we do get them together um, because that's the only way to keep their minds controlled and to take all their mental freedom away. It's like up here, up here. If they're like, oh, I have to focus up here, she's not multitasking and being afraid of her. She might a little bit in the beginning because she'll be like, oh, my natural instinct says to be over here and be worried about her, but you're telling me to be right here. So once she's trained enough to be like, oh, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid, so I know that I just need to look up here, that when she starts to do that on her own, that's when we know we can let her have more and more and more mental freedom. I know it's kind of confusing right now. Okay. Um, but we want to take, it seems it's the complete opposite of how humans are desensitized of something they're afraid of. You know, if I was scared of Mika, I would just expose myself to her over and over and over again. But when a dog does that, they don't have the, you know, if I was afraid of her, I would tell myself like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Dogs don't have that voice in their head. So we almost have to be that for them. Like, hi, look to me, look to me, look to me. If you're unsure, look to me. And it takes away any like negative thoughts. And with her, it's going to be the complete opposite. It's going to be that intense focus of negative territorial, whatever thoughts towards Winky that we want her to snap out of and get her to be okay. 